I was talking to a gentleman uh, last weekend, or Monday, and he told we were talking about the baptism of John the Baptist, how it was for the remission of sin. And he disagreed with me, and he pointed out that the Jews were baptizing Gentiles before John the Baptist ever came on the scene. Now, if that's true, what was the baptism for, and if it is true or not? What is John baptism for? No, not the John baptism, what the Jews were baptizing the Gentiles for, uh -huh. if that's what they were doing. All right. Now, the answer, first of all, is there's no record in the Bible anywhere of anybody baptizing anybody before John the Baptist. That teaching he's talking about is called Jewish proselyte baptism, and coming from what they call a proselyte of the gate. And that is found in Edersheim's book called The Life and the Times of uh, the Messiah. The other reference is found in Josephus' work. There isn't any evidence that was practiced, and there isn't any evidence that if it was practiced, anybody recognized it. Uh, maybe somebody messed around and put water in somebody. But then again, they did that in the ancient Greek religion, in the ancient Babylonian religion, in the ancient Roman religion. So it isn't significant. There is a case of baptism in the Old Testament. It's in uh, it's in Second Kings four. But that's where the fellow, where the Lord tells the fellow to go down and go in the water seven times. It isn't a case where He puts him under. You don't have any case in the Bible where anybody puts anybody under before the time of John the Baptist. Now, the second thing about it, third thing about it is, if such a practice was practiced, the Lord was very careful to stop the book at 398 B.C. and then leave a blank till John the Baptist shows up. So if such a thing was practiced, the Lord didn't recognize it anyway. The Lord didn't recognize anybody as Baptist or John the Baptist. Now, there's a reason for that. Get uh, John chapter 1 in one hand. If anybody was doing a baptism before that, they were really out of order. You know what they're doing. John 1, 29. Because John's baptism was not just for the remission of sin. If anybody was baptized for the remission of sin, they only had half of it right anyway. John 1, 29. The next day, John seeth Jesus come to him and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I have said, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. Now watch this. And I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore am I come baptizing with water. John was baptizing with water to manifest Christ to Israel. If anybody was baptized before that, they had a heretic baptism because Christ wasn't even there. Nobody was manifesting anything. Therefore, if there wasn't any baptism, it was nonsense. Now, there's something else about it. Come to Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1, when John the Baptist uh, is born, John chapter 1, verse 59, he's given a very peculiar name, and for a reason. Get us up think how strange the book of Bible is here. Here's John the Baptist suddenly showing up baptizing people and putting them under water and back up and under water and back up for the remission of sin to manifest Christ Israel. What is going under water got to do with manifesting Christ Israel? Going under water. Why does that manifest Christ Israel? Strange kind of thing. It's going to manifest Christ Israel. Down he goes under the water. Comes down there and the Lord says, uh, he says, uh, I have need to be baptized of thee and come out of me. And Christ says, Suffered so to be now, for thus it becometh to fulfill, fulfill all righteousness. Christ says, Fulfill all righteousness, I gotta go down under the water, come back up. He's down under the water, and he comes back up, and he goes down the beach, and the first four fellows he calls are fishermen. You know what they do? They take fish out of the water. Follow me, and I make it as fish as a man. It's a strange business. I'll talk about that more in a minute. All right, Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1, verse 59. How do you come to school so many people in America call their little boys John or Johnny? You think, you think of all the anti-Semitic people that call their little boys John. John's a Jewish name. You don't find the word John until you think of the New Testament, where it's Jews. It's a Jewish name. Down south, they call little boys James and Jimmy. Isn't that a strange thing? Those aren't Gentile names, those are Jewish names. My name's Peter, it's a Jewish name. 
Your name Tom. Thomas. Thomas the Jew. You strange. Well, she picked those things up. Luke chapter one fifty nine. It came to pass in the eighth day they came to circumcise the child, Jewish, and called him Zachariah, Jewish, half the name of his father, a Jewish priest. And his mother answered and said, No, he should be called John. And they said there, there is none of thy kindred that is called by this name. No Jew ever had that name, John. Who ever heard of a Jew named John? <laughs> Did you read Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, and ever find anybody named John? And then he signs to his father, I would have him called. And he asked for a writing table and wrote, saying his name is John. That guy is the first to show up like that. He has a, Jew, a name that nobody would think was a Jew. He has a miraculous birth. He's filled in the Holy Ghost in his mother's womb. And Christ said, a bill was born of women that have not risen a greater than John the Baptist. So the first Baptist is John the Baptist. And he's not a, he's not a Gentile Baptist. He's a Jewish Baptist. And he's not in the body of Christ. He's a friend of the bridegroom. What a disgusting thing, that Baptist fundamentalism. The whole thing was disgusting, you know, but it was worth, it was worth the experience. I took a Nyberg and Reed and McGee up there so they learned something. And they learned something, too. Neither came back and said, I learned that I'd done better to stay home. <laughs> and we got up there and all this nauseating stuff. And among the nauseating stuff was uh, Johnson, the, the president of Pacific Coast Bible College, getting up and giving a whole sermon on the Baptist bride's position to prove the Baptist church was the bride of Christ. And if you weren't the local Baptist church, you weren't in the body of Christ. In mean, 35 minutes, the corrupt heresy just, just bunk. And the music was the most ungodly music I ever heard in my life. I never heard worse music than a pool hall at 2 o'clock in the morning to play that place. Just jack. And it got real bad, you know, because, you know, you get together with some of the brethren. And my brother all male, you know. They're all, my, my church looks more like a hockey team or gangbusters than it does a bunch of Christians. And we get up there and, and get, you know, you can't shut your mouth forever. I mean, I tried. I, I really behaved myself like a gentleman for two or three hours, but after ten hours of that stuff, I mean, I'm just going, oh my God, man, what a, what a, what a mess. And then Cargo comes up there. Buddy Cargo, he don't help it a bit. He's six feet one, about three hundred pounds, an ex street fighter and an iron worker. He comes up there, looks around that stuff when it's over, he taps some lady on the shoulder down in front of us and said, Bless God, sister, didn't that just make you feel like running the bases? <laughs> he goes, uh, uh, you know, they don't know what they're talking about. They know what running the bases is. And it got worse and worse. And finally, the good thing it quit when it did. I mean, last night some lady in front of me turned around and said, What kind of Christians are you anyway? And I said, we're the kind of enjoy our religion, see? And she said, well, I wish you'd keep quiet. I said, I wish you'd keep quiet yourself. <laughs> and, her, and her husband is sitting right next to her. Turn around like that. And I'm cross my hand, Joe, and get ready to come up and flip him over the bench. What if you make some moves? <laughs> and nothing happened. And after all, I said, I'm ready for him. And Cardo said, that fellow have to ask, ask his wife for permission before he can hit you. <laughs> that stuff is just ghastly, see all that stuff. And these folks say, well, the Baptist church begins with John the Baptist. No way in the world. John the Baptist is not in the bride or the bridegroom. He said, I'm the friend of the bridegroom. And John. So it can't begin with John the Baptist. That old boy is a Jew. And he's called the Baptist, and he comes, and Christ said, he's unusual. Christ said, of all those born of women, they're not risen a greater prophet than John the Baptist. So if anybody was baptized before John the Baptist, they were no count anyway. Our fellow's called John, and comes along. Here's the first one. Now, what is going on here? Here Christ comes down. The first thing he does before he's tempted, before he enters his ministry, is he goes down and goes under the water. First time he comes up in the water, goes down the beach and picks four guys whose life is taking things out of the water. Now there's no way to count for that except this. When Christ came down to this earth and came down here, he came down through water to get down here. And that's why that Baptist shows up to manifest in Israel. There's water over your head. I go up there and I fly on what they call an airplane. You know what they call that thing? They call that a ship. An airship. 
You know what the driver is called? He's called a pilot. You know where he is? He's in the cabin. You know who takes care of that ship? The steward. And the, why those are, those are marine terms. You know what that bug goes up there? He flies the air wave. And when he lands, he lands at an air port instead of a seaport. You ever think about that thing? Now, you know what that stuff is? They don't know what it is. There's any airline has any idea what they're doing. Houston Space Center, they're just one step removed from an imbecile down. They don't know what's going on. But they send a guy up and they send him up in a, you know, star ship, you know, for the Star Wars. And this rocket ship they send him up in. And these guys are astronauts. N-A-U-T. Well, I know what that is. That's nautical. That's a seaman's term. It's up there in the water. They don't know it. But you've got a Bible to know. The Lord comes down, he comes out of that water, and he comes down here. The first thing he does is go into the water. You talk about confirming the Baptist position. If a guy doesn't believe in immersion, he ought to get out of this universe. <laughs> You're already immersed. You're already immersed. Your body is 85% water anyway. Matter of fact, your first birth, the water birth. Yes, sir. Nothing like a Bible to clear up the college education.